Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar presented by GuideHouse on the evolving commercial operations in the COVID-19 era. Please note that all lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. If you would like to ask a question, you may do so via the Q&A feature in your GoToWebinar dashboard. Questions will be provided to our presenters once the call has concluded and answers will be provided post-webinar. Please also note that the call is being recorded and all materials will be made available and sent out as soon as possible. I will now turn the call over to Mr. Saul Hellman. Go ahead, Saul. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to the second part of a series of webinars that we're holding uh, in relation to field force management in the era of COVID. Um, the first meeting that we um, held a couple of weeks ago focused on the um, compliance elements of monitoring in a virtual environment. And since then, in speaking to a number of the attendees to, to that webinar and a number of our clients, um, we've had a lot of feedback and, and interest into uh, discussing some of the challenges and some of the ideas that are coming forward uh, in how to keep a uh, sales force busy while uh, stuck at home and working from home. Um, a lot of the feedback that we've received has focused on meals and the provision of meals during the time of virtual engagement with healthcare professionals. And as any self-respecting marketer knows, marketing is more than meals. There's a lot more that we can be offering in the context of messaging and getting uh, the word out about our products. And so we thought it would be a good idea to convene a group of folks from our GuideHouse team, Life Sciences team, who are focused on Salesforce effectiveness and launch excellence to come and talk about um, some of the ideas that are actually percolating around the industry as it relates to engaging with healthcare professionals during the time of working from home. So uh, we'll do some very quick introductions and then we'll dive right into the topic and we'll still keep a little bit of compliance in the background. Uh, as we all know, effective marketing and effective compliance do need to go uh, hand in hand. Um, so very briefly, my name is Saul Hellman. I'm a partner at GuideHouse uh, Legacy Navigant. Um, I am one of the leaders in the life sciences group and look after our regulatory and compliance and market access teams and look after our international teams as well. I'm going to hand over to John Etchberger, who's going to um, field the rest of the introductions and manage us through the rest of the presentation. So thank you, John. Thanks, Saul. Hi, I'm John Etchberger. I'm a director with the life science group within GuideHouse. I focus specifically more on the commercial strategy side of things. Uh, and I'm joined by my colleagues today uh, for us to talk about a few of the different dynamics that are that are, we see playing out within the pharma and medtech space. But before, before we go there, I'll turn it over to Justin. Hi there, all. This is Justin Zamorowski, director with the GuideHouse uh, Launch Excellence and head of the Launch Excellence Center of Excellence here. So looking forward to speaking with you on this uh, evolving topic. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nisha Nyden. I'm a managing consultant in the life sciences practice with GuideHouse based out of Philadelphia. Hello, everyone. My name is Alette Gebra Hewitt Wilder. I'm uh, an associate director in our life sciences practice on the compliance side, uh, located out of the Los Angeles office. And I primarily work with field force monitoring, whether related to CIA or proactive. Uh, John, I'll turn it back to you. Great. Thanks again for everyone joining us today. I think what, we're, what we're hoping to build from is the fundamental question of in the environment that we find all find ourselves today, which is a fully remote or near fully remote working arrangement for a lot of different commercial operations and, and other functions. Um, are the changes that companies are being forced to employ today something that's going to have longer term implications for operations or is this just a short term fix um, in bridging the gap until we can all get back to quote normal times and so what we're really finding ourselves involved with is companies that are trying to make very difficult strategic decisions that have very long term consequences for their business or businesses and organizations such as just the decision to launch or delay launch in the current environment also evolving go-to-market models in terms of uh, field force redesigns and alternative ways to approach the mar market with different marketing mixes 
And also just how do you keep your talent that's now been benched and at home from a field force perspective uh, and customer facing roles, how do you keep them engaged and busy and finely tuned so that whenever they are able to get back out there and engage with HCP and other stakeholders more directly, that they're gonna be able to hit the ground running right away. And obviously as Saul had implied, there's uh, with a lot of these changing types of operations, there's certainly the, the background of, of compliance considerations that need to be maintained because that's certainly of the utmost importance and, and always will be. But before we get into some of the specific details that my colleagues will talk through, if we can go to the next slide, we, we just have a quick polling question for all of you that are on the line. And specifically, what we're, what we're curious about is for all of you with regards to your own organizations um, and actions that you're aware of, has your organization taken any of the following steps below in light of the current COVID-19 pandemic? And some of your answers may actually reflect an earlier step that's been taken um, and not just triggered within the past five to six weeks since most to all pharma and med tech companies have mandated work from home or virtual work arrangements. So the options and you can select any and all that apply to your organization. First one being that you've delayed, specifically delayed a product launch in light of the current environment we find ourselves. Perhaps you've moved to a more digital or non-personal approach within your marketing mix efforts. You've downsized or restructured uh, your field force and um, customer facing organization. You've trained your field force remotely or virtually, and this can take any number of shapes and forms. This could be large virtual gatherings or independent study and other creative ways to uh, continue to train and, and upskill your field force teams. Or if you've done one or more of the above uh, or all of the above. And what we'll do is we'll take this information and we'll be able to um, packaged up after this webinar and, and share it all with you so you can see how your organization is comparing to, to others uh, who had joined this who had joined this poll. Okay. And so with that, uh, if we, the first topic we want to talk about really is um, you know our, our experience and what we're seeing and the need that our clients have with regards to um, making very significant strategic decisions around launch and uh, field force deployment. And just to talk about that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Justin Zimerowski. Thank you, John, um, and greetings all. Uh, so just uh, as we get into the COVID uh, pandemic implications to launch, thought it would be good to just uh, provide a little bit of background related to Guidehouse and our uh, launch excellence capabilities, uh, because we have been supporting a mix of small, mid-sized, and large life science companies for almost a decade now. And through these interactions uh, and in this environment that we're currently in, we've been able to observe firsthand around how companies and really help companies in terms of navigating through this, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic. We go to the next slide. You know, really to, you know, say it bluntly, to say that COVID-19 is disrupting the life science industry is, is a complete understatement. Uh, I think we have all been both professionally and personally impacted related to this pandemic. And uh, we're now starting to see the trends of uh, the global shutdown uh, across, across the life science industry uh, and those changing dynamics. We've seen precipitous drops in patient visits on the order of anywhere from 10 to 20%. The implications of the halt of elective procedures in the US. Uh, and what that has has implications from our uh, integrated delivery network uh, providers and, and healthcare professionals, the pause of our clinical trials and those imposed delays and their associated impact with small and emerging companies as they're looking for capital to invest, as well as the profound global business closures that are putting strains to um, to everything from just normal operations to supply chain and continuity. So for, for companies that are really at or nearing launch or getting or in the process of launch now, we're seeing, we're, we're seeing these um, adjustments uh, occurring firsthand. 
and and their their whole launch scenarios that they're launching into now are completely different from even six weeks ago from 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 their planning efforts. So so we're definitely seeing uh, a, a movement towards the company is really trying to understand what is the overall impact of this on their provider networks and and their and their targets to determine multiple things, including whether or not they want to. Uh, offset their launches by one to three months. And in some cases, their companies are making proactive moves to purposefully shift their launches uh, by, by, by several months to, um, to allow for a settling effect for the, for the environment. On the other hand, to those companies that, that are uh, not as, um, um, that are a bit more capital constrained, uh, we're seeing we're seeing those companies start to navigate through this time period, trying to adapt agilely towards these changing dynamics in terms of incorporating additional uh, capabilities, which we'll kind of go into in more detail. So overall, we're seeing com companies that are at nearing launch, um, you know, kind of in two buckets. One is we're launching, but launching in a virtual environment. And the second one is we're we're trying to shift one to two months to three months uh, to to uh, allow for a settling effect of the of the pan of this uh, heightened point of the pandemic time frame. You know, other factors that are that are uh, incorporated into the decision making, looking at how the specific uh, market trends and prescription drops occurring with new patient starts uh, and new drug initiations are impacting the advent of mail order and the demand at which it, it's required to, to have, because uh, we're seeing anywhere from a 20 to 12 plus percent uptick in mail order prescriptions. So, so really looking to see how these elements are impacting and then the ability to leverage telehealth and looking at how to strategically interface with other telehealth providers, given that companies like tele, Teladoc, as an example, are logging record record uh, utilization with in some cases up to 50% increases in telehealth uses. So really a, a, a pretty rapid uh, dynamic time frame where a lot of the assumptions that companies were launching into six weeks ago are, are completely flipped around. So what are companies doing to, to, to sort of directly address these issues head on? So if we go to slide six, to meet these challenges, you know, across the marketing field roles and supply chain, you know, life science companies uh, are really evolving their commercial models and we're seeing this evolution take place in real time. Um, I know uh, in, in the past, many companies looked at how they could advance their commercial model, but there really been more minor incremental changes throughout the last five to seven years. But now we're seeing a very dynamic shift in, in the way in which uh, companies are thinking and, and, and actioning their commercial models. First of all, we've seen the growth of digital uh, marketing and, and non-personal promotion. Now it's completely flipped to how do we best engage our customer base and our patient, patient base digitally because that's really what we've got right now. So we're seeing a, a large uptick in digital uh, and non-personal promotions. And then also too, we're we're seeing uh, this phenomenon of the, the 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 telehealth massive increase and the need for companies to really engage on a strategic level with them uh, as well, depending upon their their ACP mix that they're launching into. Uh, the second key area is related to rep engagement tools, uh, and Nish is going to talk about this in just a little bit. But what we're seeing is the really advent and move forward with many new applications and, and, and really having the field force embracing things like Zoom and Viva Engage to be able to fully transition to virtual detailing, virtual lunch and learn settings, and virtual advisory boards uh, so that they continue so that both field medical and field sales can engage with their, their, their customers and their and their KOLs. Uh, to be able to facilitate the, those interactions while, you know, Congress activities and, and, and speaker programs are, are really um, gone uh, at this stage. You know, in terms of companies' uh, ability to, to meet the, the recession impact associated with, with, the, um, with the pandemic, 
uh, we're seeing we're seeing the um, uh, that companies now are are really looking hard at their patient support services and enhancing copay card benefits, moving to complete remote sampling uh, capabilities where they may have had just partial coverage in those areas, as well as as looking at how they can expand patient services based on the impact of of the uh, the recession and and global shutdown. And then lastly, and 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 you know, equally important, you know, what we're also seeing in, in a recent uh, 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 publication out of today from, from Global Data cited about two thirds of companies were concerned about supply chain interruptions as a result of the pandemic. I mean, this this was published just uh, a day ago. And and what, what we're hearing too is, is those companies that are dependent upon global supply chain for API and drug product manufacturing overseas, and in China are, are really looking at uh, supply chain business continuity plans, looking at alternative suppliers and, and trying to shore those elements up to ensure that they continue to have um, un, uninterrupted supply. So, so really across the board, it's a, it's a massive shift towards having a lot more optionality out there uh, across all of the functional areas to be able to help deliver, deliver the launch. So, um, so specifically in a couple of areas that GuideHouse has helped, if we go to the next slide, uh, we've, we've helped support companies and partner with them in terms of helping to transition to some of these virtual platforms uh, to engage with their uh, patients and, and, and uh, healthcare professionals and, and, and payers in different ways. And we've also leveraged uh, some advanced analytical capabilities, especially in the area of cross-secting the impact of telehealth and COVID on their existing target mix. And what we found is, uh, depending upon the, uh, the, the market that companies are entering into, there, there can be a massive shift in terms of uh, different providers uh, being, being very active in this uh, pandemic timeframe you know, to, to be able to uh, move to these platforms. So um, with that, I'm gonna have Nisha take over and kind of dig a bit further into detail in terms of specific uh, commercial engagement uh, solutions that, that we're seeing. Perfect, thank you, Justin. As we continue to think about commercializing in this evolving climate, and for the time being, moving away from the traditional model of hosting a national or even regional meetings. And if we can move forward to the next slide, as we all know, these meetings involve pulling reps out of the field with high travel time and expense. But an obvious strength of this model is that it is the most engaging for the field with in-person interactions and trainings. With increasing budget consciousness, we've seen brands even before the COVID-19 era move to a live broadcast format that maintains some of the components of an in-person meeting with a limited studio audience. This comes at significant cost savings over the traditional national meeting. We have also seen brands migrate to this format to maintain momentum at launch as we were on the cusp of the pandemic. When large group gatherings were being limited, field involvement can be monitored virtually and real-time engagements and contests can be utilized to enhance the user experience. As organizations, if you have not already postponed or paused a new product launch in the current environment, with stay-at-home orders in place and without the option to, con to conduct in-person meetings, brands are really constrained to an all-virtual experience. Similar to the live broadcast format, engagement tools can still be utilized effectively to enhance the user experience and monitor involvement levels. As expected, this is the most cost-effective of the three models. Realizing that there are advantages and disadvantages unique to all three of these models it will be really interesting to see how the disruption of today will lead to the best practices of tomorrow. Looking beyond the larger meeting format, if we move to the next slide, we can begin to think about the day-to-day -day and how we continue to engage our customers in a meaningful way and take advantage of the time the field force has due to access restrictions. Many organizations are already engaging their field force with remote trainings and opportunities to grow their skill sets. Furthermore, preparing approved sales and educational materials to be used in a virtual format is critical. Taking care to set the appropriate tone based on the stakeholders involved. 
This can be done by focusing on communicating, educating, and informing. Particularly for HCPs that treat high-risk individuals, addressing how patients can maintain their health in the face of this pandemic is important. And in the previous edition of this webinar series, my colleagues addressed compliance considerations for monitoring a field force in the current environment. And we understand that many organizations are already using virtual meeting tools, such as Zoom or Viva Engage, to compliantly conduct remote engagements. On the other hand, physicians, depending on their specialty and their level of involvement in telemedicine, may have extra capacity to focus on continuing medical education. As conferences begin to go virtual, we expect to see a rise in meeting attendance. Physician interest in market research is also heightened due to the increase in downtime and the potential to supplement lost income. Similarly, physician availability could spike interest in virtual programs offered by organizations and brands. And now I'd like to turn it over to my colleague, Awet, to touch on some of the compliance considerations. Great, thank you. Um, as we go to the next slide. So as we discussed earlier, with the need to do business differently and with the changing times with COVID and different processes and policies that are currently in place, you're gonna to wanna to look at your current environment and also assess some of these new challenges. In looking at some of the controls and the processes you have in place, you'll wanna to review to see that one, that they are taking into consideration the new um, environment, but also update or re, um, re assess the policies you have in place for the control environments that you have right now. I apologize, there's a little glitch, so if I'm uh, uh, speaking in double, I apologize for that. But in looking at these policies and processes that you do have in place, you want to look at the roles and responsibilities of those who are currently taking care of those policies, but also looking to see how they can be revamped, uh, approved, and then implemented in those processes. So right now, as we talk about interactions that are customer facing, you'll wanna look at call documentation, um, assess state of privacy, look at your communication plan and how it's affecting both internal and external communication. As we discussed earlier, sample distribution, other ways that you can still engage with your physicians as well as provide those services to your patients. Um, we talked about some other opportunities or businesses that we've done before as far as provision of meals. Some customers are looking to continue doing that on a pilot basis, but again, your whole interaction with HCPs isn't really evolved, revolving around the meal, but the meal is giving you some sort of access. So if it's not really um, a need to do it right now, we would definitely ask you to postpone that, maybe rethink other ways to engage your customers that don't involve uh, provisions of meal. Um, other areas that you're going to want to look into are patient support services. Again, for those disease states that really require you to be engaged with your patients more often, such as rare disease and oncology, you want to make sure that these new policies and processes don't hinder that interaction, but also help advance and uh, be that resource for them. Um, as we go, again, looking at sales representatives interactions, Obviously, other organizations are going to look how to better engage with your HCPs, but understand that they're also overwhelmed and bombarded at this time, um, implementing new tactics on their own. So you'll want to be mindful and uh, consider what policies and processes you are currently doing and how they may need to change um, for this current environment. Uh, the next slide, please. So again, in looking at interactions that are customer facing, whether they're related to your patients, your HCPs, um, other organizations, hospitals, um, anything that would require you to have communication um, in this environment, you'll want to look at the considerations that you're employing to your team and want to make sure that although there is going to be a different perspective as far as how you're engaging, compliance still is the center and should have um, and should be prominent so that you're not uh, confusing approved messaging or other business initiatives with how you are now engaging with your customers. Um, again, understanding those current considerations will allow for the company to still engage in the previously conducted activities, but again, from a promotional with a compliance perspective. Um, we can go to the last slide.
Okay, great. And then again, as we're looking at your whole organization and how to leverage resources, maybe current departments um, who aren't speaking to each other, whether it's IT and human resources, legal and internal audit, definitely utilizing um, tools and resources across the department. Um, if you're currently using virtual tools such as um, WebEx, Skype, or Viva Exchange, you'll want to make sure that um, these tools can be leveraged across the different departments, that access isn't hindered, that all of them can be utilized, again, with compliance um, at the forefront. Um, be sure to adhere to your company's social media policies. Again, now we're using a lot of virtual tools. We're engaging uh, both externally and internally, so we want to make sure that our SOPs reflect that type of interaction. Um, especially when interacting virtually, again, want to make sure that your audience is also aware of who they're engaging with. Again, since we're not having as many face-to-face -face interactions, this can be confusing for your customers, so we always want to make sure that we maintain who we are, what we're doing, and how we can be um, a resource for them. Um, it's a good time to, again, closely monitor your company's medical information. A lot of uh, patients may have questions. A lot of physicians may have questions now, again, with the current environment. So some of these may not be easily answered uh, as they have been before. So if there's an opportunity for your customers to get this information, utilizing medical information requests in a different format, please be sure that everybody is well-versed on how to do that. We want them to still feel like they're maintaining the same uh, exchange of information. Um, also, stay coordinated with your partners on the sales team. For example, share any knowledge that um, is based out of situations or maybe even from other organizations, things that they've been doing well and things that you can implement and how it can make, uh, obviously, your job easier. But again, with a lot of these uh, different changing times, both your internal staff, your external customers will be confused. So um, try not to overwhelm them with a lot of the new activities that you plan on implementing. Make sure that activities you have done before um, still have that compliance edge, but that um, they're able to be adapted in the short term, but then also long term. As some of these changes you're going to think about implementing will actually be um, for the long-term use as well. Um, and I think uh, I'll turn that back over to you, John. Great, thanks. And if we can just go to the last slide that we'll land on. What we've hopefully tried to highlight today is just some of the evolving dynamics that are playing out from a, a commercial operations um, and customer-facing dynamic. And I think it's, it's safe to say that nobody knows exactly where things are gonna land three, six, nine, 12 months from now. Um, but I think the hypothesis that sits there is that a lot of the actions that, that companies are taking today will have implications on how they approach certain elements of their commercial operations down the road. There's sure to be realizable um, cost efficiencies and more effective approaches to engaging both internally, coordinating internally, but also um, engaging and communicating externally to customers, HCPs, and others as well. So I think we expect to see a lot of um, continuing changes um, and new activities, uh, creative activities that, that our clients are, um, are pursuing. And it's, it's our goal to keep monitoring and tracking those and, and hopefully come back here with, with additional topics for, for discussion and for your consideration. So we do want to thank you for your time. We are right at the end of our half hour. If there is a, a critical question that someone wants to raise, um, do let our, our host know. Otherwise, we're certainly collecting any written submitted questions and we'll be sure to follow up on those afterwards. Thank you for joining today's call. Please be on the lookout for a link to the recording in your inbox. You may now disconnect. Thank you to the presenters. Bye guys. Thanks.